Welcome to Parkour Science Episode 5, Physics of Landing and Impact. Landing is the act of ending a fall or flight either to come to a complete stop or to transition into further movements. There are many ways to land, most of which will have their own Parkour Science video in the future. There's the precision, the crane, the plyo, the cat, slap out, and parkour roll just to name a few. So this will be a quick video to cover the underlying basics. What all of these techniques have in common is the aim to reduce impact and increase safety. We will look at a few of the best ways to achieve this aim, but first we need to understand the difference between impact and impulse. Impulse can be represented as a change in momentum or equivalently the integral of the impact with respect to time. But this is very mathy. To avoid blurring of too many viewers' vision, we will simplify this idea. To put it in more easily understood terms, impulse represents how much pressure your body is under and for how long. Impact, on the other hand, can be represented in a couple different ways. Average impact, which represents the total force which affects the practitioner, and even more important to our interests, instantaneous impact, which is the force acting at any point in time. This is where the danger comes from. Impact is a variable of the equation of impulse. Impulse from any landing from a given velocity, which is determined by the drop distance and initial velocity, and by a given practitioner, is relatively constant. This means that once you take off, nothing you do will significantly reduce or increase impulse. A very simplified way of looking at impulse is representing it as the force of the impact times the time. So when landing, impact can be reduced by means of increasing distance and or time. So the safest landing is the one where we increase the landing time and distance as much as needed to be safe. The landing distance is the change in height from the moment you first touch the ground to the moment your hips, really your center of mass, stop continuously moving downward, and the landing time is the amount of time between those two events. Naturally, the time tends to be longer when the distance is. The best way to land on the feet is to extend the balls of the feet forward. This allows the entire leg, including the calf, to slow the impact as much as possible and protects the other, more easily injured parts of the foot. The other method, which comes up less often, requires that you land on the bridge of the feet. This applies to jumps that have much more forward speed than downward speed, which is the case for most upward jumps and some large running precisions and railing precisions. This is unfortunately dangerous when using minimalist shoes. For many running precisions and big jumps, proper technique can still be used to avoid this. As you can see here, the most efficient and safe technique involves landing on the balls of the feet and allowing the arches to have a controlled impact with the edge of the wall. This will prevent a large amount of the impact from going into the more easily damaged parts of your foot. Unfortunately, this is not always possible. To be perfectly honest, the human body did not evolve with the intention of making such big jumps on concrete. So in many cases, shoes with support can be safer. Though I don't disagree with the minimalist idea of training smaller and safer. Analyzing different landing techniques shows their importance for efficiency and safety. This intentionally bad landing is what many who are untrained in parkour will do when they land from a small jump. This bad landing from 5 feet created a maximum of 7 g's of force during landing. It means for a split second my feet experienced what it would be like for me to weigh a thousand pounds and my knees experienced over 800 pounds of force. A proper slap out from the same height results in only 2 g's. If we double the height to 10 feet this slap out resulted in only 5 g's of force and this roll only 4 g's. Both maximum forces are significantly less than this bad landing from half the height. This roll had only a 25% decrease in force from the slap out but was still much more efficient energy-wise. Things to remember. Impact increases exponentially with height, not proportionally. So a claim like, it's only a foot more drop than that other one, becomes less safe the higher you go. Never ever lock your knees, but always extend your feet out in front of you, reaching for where you are going to land. The more noise your landings make, the more damage you may be doing to your body. Use your muscles, not joints or bones, to slow yourself. Have an active impact. Thanks for watching. The next video will be landing part two, landing technique. Comments and questions are welcome. Please rate, share, and subscribe for more parkour science videos. For Dylan's parkour videos, check out his channel here. For continual updates, check out our Facebook page.